Hello everybody, I want to talk about constitutional or junk silver. Um, it should be a very, very important part of your silver stack. And I'm going to get into why it's just as important as pure silver in a few minutes here. First of all, it's becoming more rare as the years go by. It's getting harder and harder to find in circulation, therefore driving up the price. Turning it just from a piece of junk silver into the collectible. It's more rare than silver bullion. It's just not being created anymore. It's very limited. The silver bullion, they can keep minting and minting and minting. Generic grounds, they can keep continuing to put those out as well. But junk silver, constitutional silver, more rare. Let me tell you something. I have two homes, the one here in Tucson. I have to go pay to do my laundry. It takes quarters. Therefore, every week or two, I'm going to the bank and buying a roll of two of quarters. I've been in this place for a year now, buying roll, a roll of two of quarters. In that year or two, I've not found any additional silver quarters, any pre six, any 64 or older quarters. They're just getting very difficult to find. I already, always use uh, cash. Um, when I go do grocery shopping, hoping to get back some change, it's been many years since I've gotten any, any uh, silver change back, any junk silver back. So hold on to it. Trust me, the price will increase on it. Another reason why I like buying silver, um, junk silver that is, is I can go to a few other venues where I would be afraid to buy pure silver. For example, eBay. I don't like to buy pure silver, my silver bullion, silver eagles off of eBay. People are counterfeiting those. Nobody's really counterfeiting these. No one's counterfeiting. It's not worth the time to counterfeit a dime or a quarter. Just not worth it. Now some of your newismatic coins, yeah, I would imagine those are being counterfeited. But I don't want to even talk about that right now. It's something that uh, is not part of this video. Uh, I just want to talk about junk or constitutional silver, not collector items. What I also like about this is that it's in smaller increments. This is an awesome way to get into fractional silver. Um, it's easier to make change. Imagine, you know, a lot of the silver stackers we believe silver is going to go to 250, 350. Can you imagine carrying around, a, let's say, a silver eagle? $350 silver eagle to buy or just trade a simple item? What are you going to do? Are you going to take a pair of uh, uh, chain? You know, you're going to take a, a you know pair of wire cutters and cut a silver eagle in half or in quarter or in or in fifths or tenths? No, that's why it's really good to have a dime. You know, a, you know, a fractional uh, dime, uh, junk silver dime, you know, um, because when silver is $300 an ounce, you know, a dime will be more easier to barter with, to, to, to do trade with. Um, I'm actually reading from some notes here, so. Um, another thing I like about this over regular silver is you don't really have to worry about it getting marked up and tarnished and milked. It's already that way. And uh, speaking of not having to worry about it getting tarnish tarnished or anything, I still would refrain from cleaning it. You really shouldn't try to clean these coins or try to polish them. Because in the event that they do become precious or, you know, in the eyes of uh, collectors, meaning that they become collector items once the price of silver rises, or in the event that these become so rare they're absolutely impossible to find, a, collect a collector will abide by the rules that they're collecting as of today. You don't clean your coins, you don't polish them. You know, that sort of thing. So leave them alone. Don't worry about them being shiny. Um, uh, additionally, if the shit hit the fan, folks, really. You know, I would say 
99% of the human population on this planet. <laughs> well, let's just talk about the United States. 99.9% uh, .9 of the population in the United States does not know what junk silver is. They do not know what 64 and prior coins are. Okay, to them, a coin is a coin, and it's just not recognizable of uh, other than what its face value is 10 cents for a dime or a quarter for you know 25 cents for a quarter so um, the just the visual of this is getting uh, is, is trusted um, and it uh, and the fact that 99% of the people don't know what it is it's easier for us to collect because the one the 99% don't really want it that remember they're just going off of face value so it's easier for us to um, to stack it now, um, especially more more so that it's getting rarer to find. Um, it's trusted, as I said before. Um, everybody knows what a quarter is. Everybody knows what a dime is. You got to be a you you got to be a complete idiot if you don't know what these are. So they're even more so trusted than, let's say, a a round. Does anybody recognize that round right there? If I wanted to trade it. And speaking of the value of silver, the bottom row there, those are, um, with the exception of this coin, let me get a pointer. With the exception of this coin, this coin, this coin, these coins are silver dollars face value is one dollar but just these coins alone and they're not numismatic coins just the the value of those coins alone they're uh it's approximately 120 dollars right there looking at you so folks who say oh you know it's stupid to collect silver you know uh, you should collect dollars is is ridiculous if i had a one dollar bill laying right here and let's just say it was a 1964 dollar laying right here. What would be the value of that dollar? It still would be a dollar if you're lucky. Remember we talked about purchasing power in my past videos. It wouldn't buy a dollar's worth of goods. That dollar technically is worth just a dollar. This dollar, by saving it all these years, is worth $23. Each one of these coins is approximately $23 right here in this bottom row with the exception of this one on the end. The quarter. That's worth about six dollars. Each of those quarters are worth about six dollars. That's a two cent piece. I'll talk about that later on. Mercury dimes. I just looked them up. They're about a dollar twenty, a dollar ten to a dollar twenty. Each of those dimes. So who says? Who keeps arguing that silver is just not a wise investment? What other investment do you know where the percentage of increase? Is, is like a thousand percent. It was once worth 10 cents and now worth a hundred and twenty dollars. Eisenhower dimes the same. They're worth about a dollar ten to about a dollar twenty. These peace dollars are getting so difficult to find and although they're not collector's items now, and everything, this includes everything on this table, the more rare junk silver gets, the more it's gonna push these items into the collectible realm. Trust me. I wanna talk about a couple of coins I got here on this table. Um, This right here is a, it's a two cent U.S. coin dated 1864. 
Um, it's worth right now, and, and I really didn't want to put this in here because it's not junk silver, but it is uh, one of my uh, favorite coins here. I mean, just this, this, this two cent piece is worth approximately five to seven dollars. I didn't want to talk about this coin right here. Another very favorite coin of mine. Um, I was actually gifted this coin, and I'm actually uh, very proud to own it. Uh, it's a U.S. 1832 captive bus half dollar. This one is a new Ismatic coin, and it's worth approximately a hundred dollars. This this coin alone. Um, I want to read you something about this coin, okay? I'm sorry for the shaky camera. I am hand-holding today. For a little perspective, oil was discovered in Pennsylvania in 1839. That's about 27 years after this coin was manufactured. The first car was invented around 1885, and the first airplane flew in 1903. Again, this is an 1832 captive bus half dollar. All of them, all of these coins are worth more than their face value. And are more recognizable than even the Silver Eagle or the Maple Leafs. They're more recognizable than any of your generic fractional silver. Those happen to be those Standing Liberty generic rounds. They're more recognizable than the bars. Everybody knows what a quarter looks like or a dime looks like. Folks, I'm very happy that you tuned into this video. I hope uh, I talked about everything there is to talk about. I'm not into numismatic. I'm, I'm really not educated in the collector's uh, edition of coins. So I kind of just glazed over that really quickly. In addition, um, what I also like about these coins is the fact that you don't have to keep them all protected in tubes and whatnot. Now granted, it, it is nice to keep them in tubes. Uh, uh, just in case they do turn to collector's editions, uh, that I and I do believe it, as the rarity of these coins, as, as they are no longer uh, in circulation, as they become impossible to find, they will turn into collector's coins. And therefore, maybe it is wise to protect their condition in the state that you currently have them in. So if you can, maybe put them in tubes, maybe put them in these pa uh, paper envelopes. By the way, if you know where to get these paper envelopes, they have a little plastic window in on them. Let me know. I would like to buy some. Um, you folks have a great day. Oh, one additional thing. Those two little dime looking things right there at the end. Not every pre-64 coin is um, has got silver in it. As a matter of fact, these are two from Australia. We're going to get rid of those. I just want to let you know, be aware of what you're stacking. Um, and uh, always keep an eye out for pre-64 uh, change. Have a great day.